Hello, welcome to another podcast. This is Si Win Yi from the Yi Real Estate Network. Welcome. And the title of this uh, video is Realistic Forecast in the Raleigh, North Carolina Investment Market. My special guest, once again, is uh, Kevin McVicker. And Kevin and I have been working uh, with each other for ever since 2004, so almost 20 years. So over the years, uh, many of our investors have invested in his market for cash flow and appreciation, long-term wealth. And uh, today is no different. Uh, welcome, Kevin. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day to go over uh, what's, what has happened in the Raleigh, uh, North Carolina market in, a, uh, in the past year, 2021, and what are the expectations for 2022 uh, for this year and beyond. So you investor can uh, get educated by us and make an informed decision whether you want to pull the trigger in this amazing market. So before before I'll ask Kevin to uh, uh, go over his uh, perspective, uh, if you remember when I uh, when I did a promotion uh, of this market, of your market rally, uh, about a year ago, my, uh, my newsletter recap was saying the single family home prices at that time, it's clearly, I could replay the video if you want. I mean, you guys out there, I mean, any kind of uh, single family home price at that time for around 250K, I predict in about a year, it'll become 350. Any single family home price at a year ago in the early part of 2021 at 300K or it may increase to 400K. Any home prices in Raleigh that were listed a year ago for 400K will become 500K a year later. And I know I don't have a crystal ball, nothing like that. Uh, uh, but all my predictions a year ago came uh, was uh, became true. It came into fruition. So uh, and also I also mentioned that Raleigh, the Research Triangle Park, is really Austin 2.0. I mean, and it, it's yeah, I was proven right. So I'm not saying again I don't have a crystal ball, but based on the trends based on the metrics what we see in a Raleigh North Carolina market. Uh, we see uh, continued opportunities, but there are a lot of challenges. And uh, Kevin, he knows the local market very well. He, uh, he lived the market, he understand it. He helped many out of state investors from all over the country, all over the world to invest in a Raleigh North Carolina market. So if anybody who's an expert at this, Mr. Kevin McVicker, uh, knows all about it. So he worked very hard. I mean, it's not easy to find a network realtor in a particular market to understand everything about his, his or her market. And Kevin uh, knows it. So uh, it's a pleasure to know you. you, have been a, you and we, have a, we can go over. Why don't you recap what's going on this past 2021 and also go over a high level recap of what's to, uh, what's to expect for 20. 22 and also go over uh, several investors that uh, that I sent to you and the kind of a, a real quick snapshot of the kind of uh, what how they did what kind of positive experience they experienced so uh, so <laughs> oh okay well, all right go ahead Kevin take it away well, oh. thank thank you very much for that intro and uh, give me this opportunity to present an update to your network um, you touched on a lot of the measurements that you predicted a year ago. And um, over time, I've seen them come to fruition. The uh, inventory um, is totally different than what it used to be just a year ago. Um, as you pointed out, the different price points, houses in the 200s were, were progressing towards the threes. And uh, we are definitely in the threes um, and as those homes have moved up in the price point, the thing is, um, I still have investors that will contact me and ask to buy in at those price points, but that that's not possible anymore. Those homes that we were looking for, that I, I call them really the sweet spot of the market from an investment standpoint and rental and cash flow. There's certain sizes and ages and locations that you want to uh, focus on. And we were able to find homes this time last year that were still in the mid 200s. But those are now gone. There's absolutely nothing 
uh, like them existing in the mid 200s. Not that you can't buy something in the mid 200s here in the triangle, but you will be going down in size substantially. You'll be going um, much further back in age instead of staying in that range of 15 years or newer, you'll probably have to go back 30 years old to find something in that price range. So the whole dynamics have changed. It's been moving rapidly upwards, driven by this high demand that we're seeing. Um, the demand is both twofold, both local homeowners trying to find just a place to rent, move into a house from an apartment or a condo to a single family house, coupled with this enormous influx of investors, uh, people that have been watching the market for a long while and seeing large companies that have uh, uprooted from different parts of the country and moved here to the triangle. Um, and even some of the announcements recently uh, about companies on the West Coast that are setting up East Coast uh, operations here in the triangle. Uh, that's affecting our market dramatically, and the investors are following that wave. Um, in this past year, the homes that I've been involved in selling, if you were to put a number to it, for every local buyer trying to find a home for their own family, you can put as many as five investors into the negotiating at the same time. So it's been extremely challenging for local home ownership, competing with these investors that are coming from all around the country, trying to get their hands on real estate in the triangle. Also the epic migration, Kevin, sorry to interrupt you, the, the migration from, uh, from Northeast, from New Jersey, from New York, uh, and other Southeast countries. So, so the, the, the U-Haul migration reflect the trend. So you have population growth, you have job growth. People, even from people from California are moving into the uh, North Carolina for you know, affordability, for uh, high quality yep. of living, for, for good quality of life, and, and, and all those things that makes Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, one of the top rated market. In fact, Zillow just recently reported the Raleigh Wilson market is among the top three in a country so for 2022. Yep. Number right. two behind um, a oh. city in Florida. I don't remember the exact city, but the yeah. some Tampa. city in Florida came in Tampa. number one. Yeah, Raleigh Tampa. came in number two. Yep. Okay. And, right. uh, yeah. And so, yeah. So with, um, th what that tells me is that this market is going to continue to move in this direction for the, for the foreseeable future. I, I get a common question from new investors I work with and they say, should I wait? Is the market gonna max out? Is the market going to recorrect? And uh, would it be better off to buy next year? Um, I've been working in this market for 25 years. And other than the financial crash back in 2009 that took markets down all across the country, if you took that out of the picture, there has never been a decline in the triangle. What has happened historically here is things are causing the market to um, accelerate. It hits a plateau and will stay there for a, a period of time. And then something else happens in the market that uh, announcement is made about uh, new companies coming into the area. Um, new technologies, drug companies, uh, pharmaceuticals come into the area, and next thing you know, the market takes off again. Um, and that's the way it's worked for me as a real estate agent working in this area is never seeing a really a decline, but always just ramp up, plateau, ramp up again, and plateau again. This year, this past year, or actually even longer, for almost two years now, it's been constant up. There has been no plateau. Every month when I go to sell a house. I go out and start looking for houses like we sold a month prior. I'll find them, but they're always going to be more expensive. And that trajectory has continued. And that's why those numbers you predicted have actually came through. Um, average increase, just the average increase, which takes into consideration what I consider less desirable areas in the triangle, as well as the areas that I pick. If you take the average of all of them, the market has gone up $100,000 for people in that mid 200s. So 
if you had a house, if you bought something from me a year ago, it's 250. If you were interested, call me. I could sell it for about 350 right now. And each price point down the line from a 300s are now in the fours, the fours are now in the fives. But as I was mentioning to you on another conversation, which is worth mentioning here, right now at this point in time, because of other, if you look at all the different factors, number one, we're in the winter. We're having uh, some rough weather right now with ice and snow and freezing temps, which it doesn't normally last long in the Carolinas, but it does have an effect on the market. And uh, coupled with what's going on in, in, the, in the COVID world, we got this new um, strain of the virus out there. And I've seen people that are reacting to that. Masks are back up. People are, again, staying home and staying in some seclusion. And that's exactly what happened to us when COVID was first announced. The market went soft when people were afraid to get out and buy houses. Then as soon as the market um, or the announcement about COVID says it's more or less under control and we can now go out in public, that's what caused our real estate market a year to, you know, say 15, 16 months ago, start to accelerate. Right now, I think we're in a little bit of a pause because what I've discovered with the inventory levels, the inventory levels are at the lowest that I've seen in just the recent few weeks. And it's been declining for about the past month. I've got a couple of your investors I'm working with right now. And week after week, we're having fewer and fewer opportunities that fit the criteria that I'm looking for. And so we're having to be patient to get through this period of time. And I anticipate by the time we get into the spring market that these people that have been holding off on putting their house on the market will perhaps be putting their house on the market. And we need to be ready for that opportunity when it presents itself. Kevin, you're absolutely right. So I'm, I'm, I'm challenging our investors or anyone out there that wanna buy in your market is to uh, you know put your financial house in order that meaning get a loan pre-approval as soon as possible, or if you buy with cash or if you buy with your self-direct IRA, you, you need to show the proof of funds and then um, consult with me and then uh, we will set the expectation for you, right? I mean, if you have any unrealistic expectation, we can tell you about it, okay? We're not gonna play games here. So, uh, so and Kevin, uh, you know, he, he understand out-of-state investors, he will find you the right house uh, that will meet your criteria, but you gotta be focused. You gotta be disciplined. You you gotta hold yourself accountable. You gotta, you know, uh, you just you just have to be you know uh, prepared for this kind of market because uh, you know some investors are thinking, oh, I, uh, I'm gonna wait until the price will come down. I'm gonna wait until all these friends dies down. Well, you know, I, again, I I can't predict the future, but. Uh, over the, over many many years, I work with investors. Uh, most people they say they're gonna wait. Well, you might be waiting forever, or you waiting if you wait extra six months to a year, the prices will continue to rise, and you'll be priced out of the market. So, uh, you know, uh, don't don't make any decision or not make any decisions that you may regret. Uh, so uh, so Kevin, I mean, uh, so so again, I mean. Right now, still the sweet spot is available, 350K, 375K, even 400K. It, the rent has gone up, you know, at least 20 or maybe even $2,300, $2,400. If you put 20 to 30% down payment, you're going to get at least a uh, break even to a, a slight positive cash flow monthly. So that, that should be uh, one further point is you have to don't, let, don't look at the cash flow just on, on, on this current moment when you analyze a deal. You have to look at the, oh, the total return in, in the three to five to 10 year increments. Because when you buy a house with financing, you're getting an amazing historical low interest rate of less than 4% as an investor. You get a fixed payment, you know, is amazing uh, uh, fixed payment. Then your renter gonna, you know, uh, gonna, you're gonna increase your rent you know, in line with inflation. Uh, and we know, we all know what's going on, what, what's been happening with the rent acceleration all over the country due to inflation. So your, your, your tenant gonna pay down your loan for you little by little, and then uh, your rent is gonna increase. And then you're, you're gonna expect your continual 
uh, equity uh, appreciation of your property over time. So with this metrics, with this you know, real estate, you know, if you think long term as you should, uh, uh, that that's what you're looking for, right? I mean, just stay the course uh, because uh, income property is uh, you know in historically speaking is uh, one of, uh, is the most attractive investment asset class. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, among any other type of investment. So that's that's been proven over time. So think long term, but you have to focus. You have to show discipline, understand the market. Uh, you know, Kevin's market, as you know, you, you could be seeing a little bit of bidding war, multiple offers, but Kevin, you work hard for our investors in, in this past couple of years. Tell, tell them, so what are your plan of attack? Your investor will come to you. Uh, what, how are you gonna direct, how are you gonna guide, how are you gonna coach investors, make sure they're gonna win this game of uh, that. Right, that's a good question. Um, and what I've been working on is a system, if you will, that will help people get a much better grasp of what the market is really like. Is you can read the newspaper or watch the news and follow various uh, reporting systems, and they'll tell you in general terms, this is what's happening in the triangle. But when it comes time to invest, you want to get very focused. You don't, you're not looking at everything that's out there for sale. You're looking for just the ones that make the most sense for investing. And to do that, instead of just taking average numbers or someone's, you know, just generic advice, uh, what I like to do is plug people into my system of real-time access to the MLS system. That's the multiple listing service that real estate agents use. And I've built a, a real-time system where people can have their own customized reporting mechanism that targets exactly what they're looking for, right down to a particular zip code, or if there's a spe specific set of even subdivisions that they wanna target. We can put a reporting system together that will notify us immediately, as soon as the agent finishes entering the property into the MLS, we get a real-time alert and let people know that there's a new property located here, here's the price, you wanna see more about it, click the link and see the full MLS listing in front of you. Everything from features of the property down to tax records mapping and, and aerial mapping as well, where you can see what the neighborhood actually looks like. So I've got that system working and the feedback I'm getting is, is positive. People like the real time service and that gives us kind of maybe a, a little bit of a jump start on the competition. Because if you don't have a system like that, you got to realize there's other people like you wanting to get in their hands on those properties. Whoever can get to it first, do their due diligence quickly and determine if this is a property that needs to be uh, uh, presented an offer. We can do that now within, you know, within a few hours from the time it comes on the market. A few hours later, if it's a desirable property, we can be writing up an offer on it. And so I'm trying to shorten that, that um, time lag between the time a property first enters the market to when we finally figure out that it's out there and available for purchase. And uh, that's the way I'm, I'm gonna be approaching it throughout this year. It's giving people access to that tool. Uh, and then we use it, as you say, in terms of coaching, that will get us focused at properties, but I realize you're not familiar. These investors don't know the market. They don't know the area. And uh, I'll give you a funny story that happened just last month with one of your investors. Uh, she too was using the uh, uh, service, found a property that the house looked perfect. The size was right. The price was really good. So from that system, they can instantly uh, notify me that this is something that they're interested in. And sure enough, I got this email from her and she says, Kevin, um, I think I want to put an offer on this property. How do we get started? 
Well, I got the information from her. I went online and did a geographic mapping of that property and um, confirmed what I suspected. Uh, the address sounded familiar. I just needed to see it on the map again. And sure enough, it was a property. I told her, run away. You do not want to be fooled into buying that house. It was within a mile of the city dump and the water sewer treatment plant. And I've been in that neighborhood showing properties. And if the wind is blowing just right, you don't want to be outdoors. So that's where an investor can make a, a tragic mistake by buying something online. They see the picture, they see the information, they call the listing agent, they write up an offer, and then they find out later, whoops, wrong location, or it's got something severely wrong with it that you don't want to uh, spend your money on. So um, that's where I come on board as coaching and helping you navigate through this reporting system and cherry pick from the list of properties, the best of the best. And those are the ones we go after. Yep, this, this, uh, well, this is the uh, value add that you provide, you know, uh, not you know, very, very few realtors in any market understand out of state investors, their goals, their needs. And you do because you have a track record, you have a success record. You've been working with our network for many, many years. So, uh, uh, and you have a turnkey approach, you have a, uh, one-stop shop, uh, you have an umbrella of services. Uh, so you, uh, you know, you have the property management, the title company, the, the you know, we have the loan agents uh, to get the financing, the, uh, the escrow company, the uh, contractors, whatever, you have it all in place. So out of state investors can, uh, can do well in your market because you will hold their hands, not only during the transaction phase, but long-term servicing them, taking care of them, monitoring their, their, their portfolio of homes from out of state. So, uh, so I think we are almost running out of time now. So uh, uh, my recap is that uh, there is a still opportunity in Valley, North Carolina, because uh, it's a high tech research triangle park is is an anchor tenant and you have Apple, a huge Apple campus uh, uh, being built, uh, you know, similar to Austin. So uh, it's a fast moving market. Uh, investors have to be very focused. You have to, they have to pull the trigger when you're ready. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, right now it's very, very low inventory, even less than one month of inventory. Uh, the demands continue to be very, very high. The interest rate is still at a historical low, even at approaching 4% is still historical low. And you can still cash flow in this market, appreciation potential uh, for, for the long term for the future. So what more can you ask for, right? So that's my recap. So what is your, what's your uh, final uh, uh, recap uh, from your perspective before we we'll... I would say the number one thought there, you, you, I think you touched on, but I just want to emphasize it, and that's preparation. Um, the market is going to present opportunities to those who prepare properly. And, and that's more than just getting your financial house in order. It's becoming knowledgeable of, about the area you want to buy into and giving us an opportunity here uh, myself and my staff to work with you and understand what are your specific needs. And that way, when we deliver a product to you, it's a perfect fit. It fits your portfolio and it fits your budget and it presents you with the opportunity to number one, take advantage of the foreseeable ramping up in appreciation. This is very still very much uh, a market where we are going after appreciation. Um, as I said before, if you think about it, if we're in a rapid appreciation mode, it's going to plateau at some point. And that's when you will see your cash flow become more of a focal point. You will have, you will have captured the appreciation and got an instant benefit there. And then later on when it plateaus, that's when you work with your property manager and your uh, tenants and you manage your rent rates. Don't forget about that. I've seen so many investors that um, I find out that they've had the property rented for six, seven years, same tenant in place, and they never once thought about raising the, the rents. You gotta manage you know, the, the, the asset that you have and keep a track of where the rents are in the market and make sure the rent, the, the tenants are paying what 
is a market rate. If you do that, coupled with the appreciation, you can't you can't lose. Very well said, Kevin Nitvicker. Thank you so much for taking some valuable time out of your day. I know you've worked very hard for out of state investors. Thank you for all your hard work on behalf of our members, our investors. Thank you so much. Uh, have a nice day, everyone. Good luck in your financial future. This is Xi Wing Yi. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye bye.